Hi everybody, Lisa from Supportive Tarot. Welcome back to Tarot Memoirs. This week we're looking at The Fool and I'm going to try to keep this video a little bit shorter than the last one. So I want to jump right into it. So just as a reminder, I'm going to be reviewing sort of first the excerpts that I've taken from Rachel Pollock's 78 Degrees of Wisdom, Benabel Wen's Holistic Tarot, and Melissa Sanova's Kitchen Table Tarot. And then we'll dig into looking at some contrasting card images, and I will share some stories from my personal life that I feel capture the energy of the magician. I will tell you that this week was a really interesting opportunity for me to get to know the magician a bit better. Historically, I've had sort of a mixed relationship with the magician. I feel like I've either seen the magician as that really powerful manifesting energy, or I've seen the magician as this manipulative, like, jerk. I haven't really dug much deeper than that, and I think this exercise has been really good for me because it's allowed me to think of the magician in a little bit of a different way. So with that, I'm going to jump right into some of my favorite passages from these books, and then we'll dig in. So from Rachel Pollock, uh, I have a few passages, and I try I will try not to get into every single one that I highlighted, but the ones that had the most wow factor for me. The magician as the beginning of the major arcana represents consciousness, action, and creation. He symbolizes the idea of manifestation, that is, making something real out of the possibilities in life. Another section that really got, uh, really hit me hard in a powerful way, he is not casting spells or conjuring up demons. He simply stands with one hand raised to heaven and the other pointed to the green earth. He is a lightning rod. By opening himself up to the spirit, he draws it down into himself, and then that downward hand, like a lightning rod buried in the ground, runs the energy into the earth, into reality. This idea of thinking of the magician as a conduit or as a lightning bolt of power, somebody who's just simply harnessing energy, he is not the creator of that energy, he's pulling it down from a higher self or a higher power and then manifesting it out into the day-to-day -day world. That's what gave me a tangible idea, I think, to grab onto for my own personal journal work and figuring out what stories I wanted to share with you all. Also in here, I like this. This is another part related to that conduit idea. The life force that fills the universe is not gentle or benign. It must be discharged, grounded in something real, because our bodies, ourselves, are not meant to contain it, but only pass it on. This feels a little, yeah, I just, that really, really caught my attention. Let's just see. I had a couple other sections here. Let's do this. Let's get into the shadow side. So in uh, Rachel Pollock's book, In the Shadow, she talks about the fact that the magician reversed signifies that in some way the proper flow of energy has become disrupted or blocked. So this idea of being the conduit, but there's a blockage now somewhere or a corruption to that energy. So it can mean a weakness, a lack of will, or a confusion of purpose that leads to doing nothing. The power is there, but we cannot touch it. The reverse trump can also mean power abused, a person who uses his or her very strong character to exert a destructive influence on others. And that I was fairly familiar with, but I did like the way that she worded it there. In Benabel Wen's book, there's a couple of interesting pieces that I wanted to share she thinks of or she expresses the magician rather than so much a, a less tangible idea of energy manifested she talks here about the mind so specifically she says the magician implies the limitless capabilities of the mind when it is concentrated it is the card of individuality and she also says the magician is worldly knowledgeable and self-aware he manifests self-mastery so in, in an interesting way she pulls the energy that the magician is pulling from as internal or an internal source of that energy and then talks about manifesting that out that energy into self mastery, which I thought was a really cool concept. She also says this is a card about personal greatness, mastery over the physical, mental and spiritual. And finally, she has an interesting contrast to the fool, which I when you think of the fool's journey, I really liked this. She says that in key zero, the fool could potentially be constructive or destructive. He's kind of like that blank slate, right? Uh, she says, but at the juncture that the fool appears in, it is still unclear which path or which fork, she says, the fool will choose. 
In key one, the magician has chosen and is acting constructively when the card appears upright and destructively when in reverse. So when we see that card in light, we see that, that the fool has made a choice and is now the magician manifesting the next steps in a positive and constructive way or in shadow has taken maybe the wrong path. So that's really interesting. Uh, there's a little bit more here in reversals that I highlighted. Um, so when reversed, the seeker is using power for destructive purposes. The magician card is a case study, contrasting the right-hand path and the left-hand path in spiritual development and energetic perspective, or practices, sorry. Uh, the right-hand path is about acting for the greater good, for harnessing the powers of creation, building, expanding, and bringing forth the light. The left-hand path is the individual quest, the quest of self-fulfillment and personal honor. In reverse, the card is also about harnessing the powers of destruction, though that is not necessarily evil or negative. If my camera is frozen right now, I'm very, very sorry. <laughs> I've been having some technical difficulties today, but I'm going to keep on trucking on. So hopefully my camera catches up with my voice here in a moment. The Magician card in reverse is about breaking taboo, personal anarchism, and a focus on self-power. And I really liked that reference to self-power because it's really the service of the self that's the shadow side of the Magician in my own opinion. At least on my previous screen, my camera is back, so that is awesome. Apologies and thank you for sticking through that. <laughs> but I really don't want to start this all over. So next we have Melissa Sonova's Kitchen Table Tarot. And here she says her little single phrase for the magician is I am doing. So remember in the fool, she had I am going. She says the magician has all the magical tools in front of him, but he's not reaching for them. He has his own two hands, one usually pointing up and one down. So that calls to the Wiccan prayer as above, so below. Um, and I believe there's actually more history to that than Wicca, but I'm not sure. If somebody knows, please feel free to educate me in the comments down below, but I thought there was something more to that. Um, like hermetic hermeticism? I, don't, I shouldn't guess, but if you know, <laughs> tell me, because I would love to know. Um, he is in control of the elements he's calling the shots. The magician uses his own energy to make things happen. This is a card of action, um, and I like the comment here. She talks about how the magician has self-confidence and a bit of swagger, this whole I got this energy, uh, and I think that's about it. Yeah, the magician inverted is a jerk. Power and swagger gone bad. Look over there. Well, I'm a crazy bad guy over here, and that's kind of how I see the shadow side of the magician as well. So with that, let's look at some cards. I had so much fun digging out um, different magician cards to show you because that's one of my favorite things to do is compare different images and different takes on cards across different decks. So I will again pull, hold up the, not again, for the first time, the, <laughs> the Magician card from the Rider Waite Smith. This is the Centennial Edition in a tin. It's my only classic Rider Waite. So I'm going to hold this guy here and then we're going to go through some other ones on my other hand and we'll see how it goes. So first I have here Existence from the Osho Zen Tarot. And this is obviously one that is this is my home deck, my first tarot deck ever, so I'm pretty comfortable with this image, but even this image, I would kind of pull it in a spread and be like, what? Like, what? But most of the time when I pulled this in a spread, what would come to mind is this idea that the person in question either is aware or needs to become aware that they are connected to everything, that they are star stuff, that they have access to all the energy in the universe, all the power that they need to get what they need to get done, done. And so in that way, this really captures the magician, and I like that. Sorry if I'm wiggling the camera. <laughs> this image is from, sorry for the glare, from the Star Tarot. And there's a lot of really cool symbology in this one, but I really like, again, that cosmic, that cosmic vibe I get from this. And I like that it's very clear to me in this image what uh, Rachel Pollock says in 78 Degrees of Wisdom about drawing energy down from the universe or from spirit and then manifesting it down into the earthly plane. And you can see this figure is literally shooting a lightning bolt out of the bottom hand towards the earth, which I think is really, sorry, I should keep this up, which I think is really cool. I noticed in my last video, I like to do like this kind of stuff <laughs> with the card. So I'll try not to do that this time. I also have here the, oops, my cards are going to fall. There we go. 
I have the Shaman from the Wildwood Tarot. Now this guy to me seems both scary and really trustworthy. Like, see, I'm doing it again. I like to talk with my hands. That's the problem. Uh, I really feel like this guy, this has got a Gandalfy. Um, oh, who's the, I'm going to kill myself later, but not kill myself. I'm going to beat myself up for this later, but I can't remember the name. Oh, um, Dumbledore. Thank you. There it is. It's right there in my head. Kind of a Dumbledore-y kind of energy. So there's some comfortingness about this card, but there's also uh, some, you don't really know what you're going to get with this character. He seems a little bit more wild, a little less tame, and I think that can really speak to how the magician could really go either way in lighter and shadow. I love the Mary L magician. This to me speaks of manifesting, of harnessing and creating power. I, this, like, come on. I think my screen might have just froze again, but at least there's a pretty card up. There we go. I think I'm good. Next, from the Legacy of the Divine, I'll wait for my screen. I see this little blue spinny wheel and I'm like, oh man, my screen is frozen again. Let me give it a second. Hello, little screen. Hopefully you guys can see this. I tried to film this earlier, just in case it's still frozen. I tried to film this earlier and, uh, I happened to look up just as it froze, so it was like the worst eye-rolling expression ever. Come on. It just doesn't want to go. There we go. Okay, there's my dog barking. Shayla, hey, leave it. Leave it. Good girl. Okay, sorry. Where are my hands? There we go. This guy's got this, like, science-y, um, alchemical kind of vibe to it. My dog is totally buffing at whatever is happening outside. Hold on. I might need to like call her over in a second. You can see her little tail flipping at the door. I thought she was going to be fine locked in. Apparently not. Let's just, there we go. So this guy is really cool. And again, there's this lightning bolt reference, which I'd never noticed before in any of my magician cards. I'd never noticed that lightning bolt imagery. And now it totally makes sense. In the Shadowscapes tarot. Really? Shayla, are you trying to escape? Oh, I think Peggy might have just let her out. She was like ninja back there. That was that was really cool. <laughs> anyway, this is the Shadowscapes Tarot Magician. And while the colors are really pale here, sorry for my chip nail polish. I need to redo my manicure. <laughs> He's holding a ball of what looks to me to be energy. And it's even got some green in it. Um... And what's interesting about that is that the ball of energy he's holding is the same color as the ball of energy under his feet. So I get this impression in this card almost that he's drawing his energy up from the earth and then manifesting it outward. So a little bit of a reversal in a way is how I see this one. Still really cool though. So I keep dropping the right of weight. I'm going to just put it down because two hands, it's like patting your head and rubbing your stomach at the same time. Like it's not, it's not going to happen. This is Peter Baelish from the Game of Thrones tarot. This is a great card, I think, to capture, at least for, to me, to capture the shadow side, the manipulative, puppet mastery energy of the magician. So here's somebody who's definitely taken that left-hand path, somebody who's self-serving, who has his own goals to meet, and that's what he's focused on, and that's what he's manifesting, and consequences be damned, right? That's how I see this. Pretty cool. Again, this cosmic vibe. This is the sun and moon tarot. Love the cosmic energy of this magician. And again, he's still got one hand up, one hand pointed down, and all of this really cool cosmic energy above him. I'm going to try to not put my fingers in the way, but I really want to touch things. But yeah, all that cosmic energy above him. Really cool. I'm sure we've all seen this beauty. Again, we have energy radiating from up high coming down and out to the world. So I see a, most of the rays are coming down to the earth. And here again, we have a figure, in this case, a beautiful cheetah, who, I was like, which cat is that? A beautiful cheetah, who is not needing to pick up or handle any of these tools. They're a representation of the power that this magician manifests in the world. Cool, right? Oh, almost 15 minutes in and I'm still showing cards. My problem is I can't narrow it down, right? <laughs> Nope, you got a little spoiler. This one is the zombie tarot. And we have this, again, I see this more as a shadow side. This this is like the 
to me, the mad scientist gone wrong. Like, what is this dude up to? It, it's not good. Like, I feel like it's not good. <laughs> and this, from the Deviant Moon, as difficult as I find some of these images, I mean, they're the opposite of my usual interest, I guess, from an aesthetic point of view, but instead of not holding the tools, or any of the tools, he's literally touching all of the tools. He's got, like when I pull this, the first thing I think is he's got it all under control, or at least he thinks he does. And he certainly wants everybody else to think he's got it all under control. Like, I got this. This is that I got this energy that I pick up on from, uh, or that I pick, talked about from Melissa Sinova's book, that I got this energy, definitely in this card. And finally, we have the, this is the Fairy Tale Tarot by Baba Studio. I don't know if it's going to focus on the text. Bring it in front of my face. Anyways, the story referenced here is the Storyteller at Fault, which is a story about a trickster fellow, a trickster magician. And that's one of the few cards I have that I really see the trickster energy based on the story in this case. And I think that's a really powerful representation as to have for the magician, because that is an element that's at play a lot of times. The, the master of illusion or of disguise or that person that makes us think we're seeing something. This could be a card in its darkest aspect that could be gaslighting, manipulation, making people see something that isn't really there. And I think that's something to remember about the shadow side of the magician for sure. So those are the card images I picked this week to share. Um, and I don't have a million decks, so I'm sure we're going to see some repeats from different decks. I think I even had some repeats this week, but those were the ones I really picked out of my collection. I was like, yes, let's do these. So relating it to my personal life, from a light perspective, there's a few different moments. Well, I shouldn't say moments. There are some experiences I've had in my life where I feel like I've truly stepped into my power. And stepping into my power is definitely, I feel, a manifestation of the magician. That's when I was, that's when I'm in a position in my life. I think my screen might be frozen again. I'm just rolling with it. That's when I've been in a position in my life where I have felt like I've got this. I've got it all under control. And not so much control is what I'm really referring to in this instance because I'm looking at the light shadow, or sorry, the light side of the magician. And in the light side of the magician, if my screen would ever unfreeze, terrible, I hate this. I hate that it does that because it was working so smoothly in my first few videos and now it's being like cranky. Anyways, try not to be distracted, but I'm a squirrel. So in the light side of the magician, stepping into power is things like when I feel really confident in my work, creating systems and improving processes, the things that I feel like come in a, some ways that come easy to me and that I can improve other people's lives with, those things where I feel like I'm really pulling from that knowledge gained and those skills that I've attained over time and I'm able to put them into work in my in my day-to-day -day life. But then there's also uh, the more cosmic energy of when I feel very plugged in when I'm speaking to YouTube about stuff, when I'm pulling cards for readings. I get this thing where my nose gets itchy. Does anybody get who was talking about that? I think it was Imogen Walters was talking about her mouth buzzing um, when she gets like that intuitive, when she feels really intuitively connected. I get that. My nose gets really, really itchy or buzzy. These are moments when I feel like I'm really drawing power in and then manifesting it outward. When the words that come out of my mouth when I'm giving a reading feel like they're being, I don't want to say channeled because I don't think that's quite accurate, but I'm definitely clicked in or plugged in to my higher self or to the universe in those moments when my intuition seems to feel bigger than me. Those are the kind of everyday moments that I would attribute to the energy of the magician. From a shadow perspective, Peggy and I, my wife Peggy and I, have a running joke about using my powers for good versus not for good. So for example, at work, when I organize things and everything goes very smoothly and I'm able to be really helpful, that's using my powers for good, my organizational powers or skills. But then if I take those same skills and I 
become mindless with them or self-serving with them, then it becomes controlling or manipulative. And these are the areas in my life where I feel like the magician energy has not been constructive, where I got this can actually be grasping and clinging and holding on to control of a situation rather than allowing and creating space for others. So there's one other experience I wanted to share before we wrap up Tara Memoirs this week. The first experience I had, public speaking. And I've, I've spoken in front of other people before, but the first time I realized that I loved it was when I spoke at a conference locally. And my purpose there was to tell my story as it relates to being a larger bodied yoga teacher, how I got to where I am with that whole journey. And I remember stepping onto stage and I was excited, but I was nervous. And the moment I started speaking, it was as it was almost an out of body experience, except I was ex I was extra in my body. I was extra present. And the way that I feel like my story poured through me with without a hesitation without nerves it just felt like true connection with the people in the room and it felt powerful when I was standing there and speaking and it felt I felt the ripple effect of that power for days weeks after and I'd had this moment where I was like this is incredible and it was an experience that I expected to challenge myself with. I expected it to feel very much outside my comfort zone, much like this YouTube channel. And then when I stepped off the stage and I started talking to people about the different speakers and their experience at the conference, and I realized that my experience wasn't singular. It wasn't happening just for me. It happened for everybody that was there. And whether they resonated with what I had to say or they didn't was irrelevant. It was the fact that it was a genuine connection and that in that moment I had really, again, I'm going to use the word channeled, although it's not quite right. I had pulled something from my higher self and then manifested it out into the world. And that would probably be my most memorable magician moment. So I would love to hear some of your magician moments if you're comfortable sharing. And if you're not comfortable sharing, I really encourage you to follow along by journaling um, privately and just connect the archetype of these tarot cards of these both big and the major arcana and small when we get into the minor arcana, but really dig in and figure out where these characters or these experiences these moments have played a role in your life because I tell you what I'm two cards in and my perspectives on the tarot have already shifted as I've had this tangible thing to connect to so with that I'm gonna leave it and keep my video under an hour <laughs> I thank you very much for joining me and wherever you are in the world I hope you have a beautiful day a beautiful morning afternoon evening and I will see you all again very soon bye